Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to make these awesome little golf ball holders. So you can fit three golf balls and you can have four tees and you have the choice of either to have the small one or the tall piece or you can have two tall and two small. And then we have, I have a rivet on the bottom but you could do two snaps if you want. So we have a snap at the top and you can fit three golf balls in there okay and then for the option for the back let me just close that we have a tab here that you can put on it or you have a longer kind of tab piece you can put the ring on the top and then you can use this as a belt loop if you want it all right so this is the one that we're going to be doing today as you can see we got some three nice golf balls in there Okay, I'm just going to swap it out here, one, yeah, now see how fantastic is that? All right, I hope you join me and come along and I hope you're going to try making some of these little golf ball holders. All right, the things we are going to need to get started for this project are I'm using a vinyl today and a felt for this. So for the first hooping, which is kind of like the front cover piece, I need a piece for the front and the back of the piece that goes on there. And then the part to hold in the tees, I need a couple of little extra pieces of the vinyl, which is what I'm using. And I have a mark showing the half here we go, showing it divided in half. That's going to help lining it up. And then for the other hooping, for the main part, we're gonna need a piece of vinyl for that and a piece of felt for the underlay, under lining part. And then for the either tab part or a longer handle, you're going to need also a piece for that and a piece for the lining. And then for mine, I like to use rivets. So there's quite a few rivets here and depending on the thickness of your vinyl so i'm using a double cap because it has two caps rivet nine millimeter diameter and i lost it here it is here we go and then this is a nine to ten millimeter post length on it so what you need to make sure of is that when you've got it through all the thickness of the layers that you're going to have enough to put the cap on. So just remember, you're putting quite a few layers together. So you need the rivets for that. And then you can either do two snaps, one on either end, or you can do a snap and a rivet, which is what I'm going to do. So I have these little metal button snaps here, and they are a S spring version. Okay, so we need those. All right, so let's go get started with the first hooping. And I have a piece of tearaway stabilizer and I'm gonna go run the placement stitch. There we have it. The placement stitch for this is done. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to add the front and the back material to this one. So I like to use a 505 spray, but you can either tape it or whatever you prefer. Okay, and so the next thing that we have to do is now we have to take it back to the machine and run the finished stitching that's going to hold these two together. there we have the finished stitching done to hold that together now the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be running the placement stitch to hold the T stuff in place so what's going to happen is it's going to run the three placement stitches on either side and then we're going to go back and put this down run one stitch and then we're going to use this uh, T as a way to do that on top of the stitching or if you don't have a T you could use something like a knitting needle it's a little bit thicker but 
if you can find something that you could use, or I will have the measurements in the pattern that would be acceptable for that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run the placement stitch and then we'll be back to start adding the uh, pieces for the T-holder. And there we have the placement stitch they've been run so there is two different size holders and that is the one I'm making however you do have the option of doing just the large or just the small all right so what's going to happen is we're working on this side first in this design and it's we need what we need to do is you've got the inside and then the side that's closer to the outside edge there okay and so what you need to do is you need to take your material and if you want to cut it straight now, then you can just line it up over that first line where you want it to go. I like cutting mine afterwards just so I can get uh, a nice edge on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and this here, let me just show you. This is why I have the middle line here. There is a reason for it. It is so that you can line your material uh, up in the very center of it, and then you're going to be able to get the right amount of stitching on either side of the line. Okay, so we have the center here, and all I'm going to do is lay it down over there and kind of just put it in place like that. Here we go. And then I'm going to tape it down, and in my machine, this actually works better if I tape over the spot where it's going to be and that helps my machine slide over this particular material. All right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go run the tack down to hold that together. And there I have the stitching to hold that in place so just take the tape off. All right and so the next thing we have to do so the next stitch that's going to run is this one here and you can measure on the back and kind of line it up if you like but I just prefer to use the T I just find it a little bit easier so what I do is I just kind of snug the T in there I pull it out and then I just put a piece of tape again over the whole place where the stitching will be Okay, and then I take that back to the machine and run the next line of stitching. And that one is done, and so just take the tape off of that one. Okay, now I was just testing to see how well that worked. And it's really good so I'm going to do that with the next one and that is the exact same steps that I'm going to do with this side so I'm going to run the one then I'm going to use this and now again I'm using this for the last one so the same thing is going to happen it will be uh, run the first line tape this okay so that's what you have to do Right, so there we have the little T holders for the side. All right, and so now I like to cut off the little excess on either edge. So the first one on this side, you might have lined up 
uh, nice and you should be you might be fine with it but I like to put a little bit more and then cut it back a little so what I do to cut I actually just use you could use applique scissors if you wanted to but what I do is I just use a little piece of um, cardboard that I keep for materials and stuff and I just fold it in half so I have a double layer and then I just slide it under that figure out exactly where I want it and don't leave it too short because you're going to be sticking things in it you want to make sure that it has a little bit of support and then I use an exacto knife and just cut that off all right so I just do that on all the sides all right so there we have that all right so like I say don't cut it too short because you do want it to hold well enough on there and the next thing that we're going to need to do is we need to go run the rivet holes that are on the side and then the holes that are going to either be for the snap or a bottom rivet and I just want to show you that it is showing on the back of the inside and that was done on purpose so I did it this way because I thought that it would be a lot better to have a little bit more structure holding these on as it's pulling in and out all right so that's why I did it that way so the next thing are the placements and let's go run those there we have the finished front piece okay so you just got to take it out and then you cut it out around the edge and there we have our piece okay so it's going to be sitting on the other part of the holder like this and so if you want to cut off a little bit of the top and the bottom you can go ahead and do that as well I think I will go do that all right so I'm going to be coming back with after I do that I'm going to be coming back with the hoop number two the main part And there's the placement stitch for the second hooping and as you can see I have the main body piece and the what I'm using is the handle piece I guess on the back so it's going to have uh, two spots that it's riveted on the case and then a loop piece at the top for the d-ring or key tab all right and this really is like the easiest part of it all you're going to do for this is you're going to be putting the front pieces on and then we're going to be turning it over and putting the back pieces on. All right, so now we can go ahead and take it back to the machine. And we're going to run the outline, which holds it all together. And then it's going to run the snap tab, not the snap tab, it's going to run the rivet holes and the snap placements. There we have it it is done see how quick and easy that one is see there all right so the next thing that we have to do is we have to cut this out All right, there we have our pieces done. 
So the next thing that we have to do is take it over and I'm going to go to my riveting snap cutting table and this piece will go there and then we'll have one on either side and for the back you've got the two holes here so that'll get over with a uh, ring or a uh, three-quarter inch swivel on there, swivel clasp on there, and then those will go on the back like that. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the things I'm going to do over here is I'm going to punch the holes, and then we are going to start adding the snaps and the rivets. All right, so what I've done is I've added the key loop ring here with the longer piece that you can use as a belt loop onto the back and I have added the snap on the front and on the front of this. All right, and so the next thing that we need to do is we need to start adding the rivets to the side. And all you do is you take the side of it and you lay this piece over top all right, and then you put the rivets through on the one side, and then you're going to do the same on the other side. And there we have it. It is all done. So I do have a snap on the top and a rivet on the bottom. You could definitely do two snaps if you want. However, I think it might just hold better on the bottom with that. All right, so I hope that you like this little project and I hope you will give it a shot. So thank you for watching and if you haven't yet, please subscribe and if you can and like the video, please give me a thumbs up and have a wonderful day.